This is the next setup and it has to do with the um, square wave appearance. It doesn't provide pictures but um, you're supposed to use your own discretion and basically what they want you to do upon that setup is to produce a uh, 10 kilohertz uh, square wave waveform of five divisions and they have specific locations in which graticule it should be set under uh, at which point you are supposed to make adjustments on a specific uh, capacitor I think there are open air capacitors and um, some resistors for the best corner and flat top of that uh, specific uh, square wave that you have in the picture. And that's all there is to it. And when, once you do channel two, you flip over to channel one. It's funny, you got the whole square wave, but they actually want you to go in and center the, the top on the center graticule like this. I could actually do it like that. So you could just have that in the picture and work with this to get a nice flat line. I'll adjust for the camera. And this is what we're working with. And this will be done with uh, C53 shown here and R97 shown here. Probably have to go back and forth to get a nice picture on those. We could see the uh, the flatness of the wave improving. I went one graticule up because it was cleaner to look at. This is the resistor, not the capacitor. I'm just displaying how that looks till I get that nice and flat. I think the edge comes from the capacitor itself. Here's a capacitor. You can see what that does. You get that nice and flat. There we go. I find bringing it in 10 microseconds makes it even easier because it just, you can see it even better. There's an example right there. And that doesn't look too bad. I'm going to call it right there and move on to the next channel. Channel 1 will be C3 and R47, the same task. And we can see channel 1 is looking a little wavy because we haven't worked with it yet. We'll see how it looks when I'm done. And there we go. Now I got channel one done uh, and that task is now completed. I think that's good. We'll move on to the next task. The next step has multiple parts. And the first thing that needs to be done is um, setting up channel one for the correct amount of divisions. And in order to do that, I need a um, an exact input voltage. And unfortunately, you know, with the field tech with all the stuff that I have to do isn't up to the task. However, I could use the hand tap, which is which is auto calibrating and it's modern uh, to derive that signal. And that's what I'm doing now. There's a 10 millivolt signal or 50 millivolt signal, 10 millivolt divisions, which is what I want the Tektronics here to replicate. And in doing so, I'll be able to make sure the signal is right at the right amount of divisions and adjust accordingly. And I'm going to be using the channel one gain. And then I'm going to repeat this exact process over at channel two for five divisions and do the channel two gain. And this first step is gonna be um, 50 millivolts at the 10 millivolt setting. And that is based on the initial setting of 10 millivolts here. So that's what we're gonna do now. And we're gonna set that up. The potentiometer, the blue one all the way to the right is the channel one gain. And the one just to the left of that is the channel two gain. And those are the ones that are going to be used uh, for this portion of the exercise. So basically, it's a matter of sticking the screwdriver in and adjusting this pot, as I'm doing now, uh, to get exactly uh, five graticules to match the hand hack. It's not very hard to do, because I've got it right about there. And once I have this channel done, I'll simply uh, transpose this cable and adjust the input and repeat this process again. I personally found if you want to measure the distance between graticules, it's a lot easier just to change the timing like this. And then you could see it like a, a solid bar almost, as I've done here. Well, it's hard to see in the, in the camera, but... And then I could just count the highlighted bars to see exactly how much I'm going to measure. That's basically what I do. I've then moved it to channel 2, and I've performed the same action on the other pot. This one is now exactly 5 divisions, and that completes this portion of the step. Now I'll move on to the next portion. For the next portion, I have to switch both of these all the way down to 2 millivolts. Because the signal on the input is going to be 10 millivolts now. On the hand tack, I'm adjusting this, the incoming signal now to try and get 5 graticules. I've adjusted this one for 2 millivolts as well. This is kind of what I do just to get things all lined up. There you go, there's five. That five is now transposed back onto the Tektronics as seen here at two millivolts. 
and it looks like it's dead on, but I'm going to adjust the pots anyway, if only to clean them, so I'm going to do that now. And this is the uh, 2 millivolt gain for channel 1. And I already knew it was good. Again, I'm just, this is an opportunity to clean a pot that hasn't been cleaned in years. And I'll just put it right back to the uh, five graticules and lock it down. Channel two was slightly off, so it could benefit from an adjustment anyway. So I'll clean them first. Oops, fell off there. Well, I'll clean them and then I'll lock them down. Channel two is now completed as well. So set both input switches to ground and check that no tray shift occurs between the 5 and 2 millivolt positions of channel 1 volts division switch when, when flipping between them. If tray shift has occurred, repeat step 2 of this procedure. Well, when I go between 2 and 5 now, there is notable shift. So it looks like I have to repeat step 2 now. I, I figured this wasn't going to be all easy, so back to step 2. So I went and did as directed, and 2 to 5 seems stable now. No. Looking okay on channel A and B. Getting back to it, the book asks that this test be done on both channels, uh, referring back to step 2 if there's a problem. Indeed, there was a problem, and I was able to correct it, and that problem is no longer exhibited, allowing us to move on uh, to step 7. While we're doing all this, I got the uh, the bag covered in some olive oil here to uh, loosen up some old chipping label. I've already done a test piece here and it looks as though it's allowing it to come off. So we're going to see what happens and go with that and try and clean this up further. But I just wanted to point out that this is going on in the background while calibration is being done. Part 7 is not an adjustment, but, but a check. And it wants to go through a, a bunch of different volts per division given a input voltage and check against the table shown in 6 through 8. I bring us to this table here. And these are the values for that table. Um, what it doesn't show, only talking about doing the same thing for channel 1 or 2, what it doesn't show is what happens if this falls outside those divisions. It doesn't say anything. It just says check that they're within those values and move on. So I'm going to do it and, and we're going to talk about it. But if they're within, great. If they're not, then there's nothing I can do because it doesn't say what to do. So very painfully, each one of these are going to have to be done up on the hand tack uh, to get the actual value beforehand because of the field tack, as previously mentioned. So that's what I'm going to have to do. That's all. For the first one, 2 millivolts, uh, input signal 10 millivolts. Uh, vertical deflections of five and we see that on the hand tack I'm all set up I'm gonna bring that cable over to the uh, to the Tektronix now and we knew that this was gonna be good because we just calibrated this before but I'm doing this just because the test says to do it we see five vertical divisions within the accuracy limits of 4.9 to 5.1 good enough for me move over to channel 2 channel 2 again no surprise five divisions and we're gonna move to the next value Next value is a 5 millivolt setting with 20 millivolts for four divisions. I have it set up on the hand tack. This is going to be the last time that I say it's on the hand tack. Obviously, this is how I'm doing it. But we can see four divisions on the hand tack. I'm going to move it over to the Tektronix. We can see 5 by 4 in channel 1 looks good. Move over to channel 2. Channel 2, 5 by 4 looks good. Move on to the next value. And this is 10 millivolts showing 50 by 5 on channel 1. And this is 10 millivolts showing 50 by 5 on channel 2. This is 20 showing 0.1 by 5 on channel 1. And there's the same signal on channel 2. Moving on to the next one. Here's 50 by 4 showing 0.2 on channel 1. And again 50 millivolts by 4 showing 0.2 on channel 2. At this point I had to disconnect my resistor because now the voltage is is creeping up already. Now it's, it's showing 0.45, it's really 0.5, but at this point it would already be like 15 volts to be able to drive this thing. And what we're seeing is, um, this is 100 millivolts by 5, and this is for uh, half a volt, so this is looking good on channel 1. And channel 2 is looking good as well. This is 200 millivolts by 5 for 1 volt, and channel 2 also looking good at this setting. And this is 0.5 by 4 for 2 volts in channel 1, and this is the very same in channel 2. 
and this is one volt by five for five volts input. Now getting into whole numbers. Channel two also showing the same value, good. And this is two by five showing 10 volts. And this is channel two. This right here is five by four for 20 volts in channel one. I'll come back to this in a second. We'll look at channel two. And this is five by four for, for channel two. I'll bring this into position. And you can see that they're, they're off slightly. It's a little bit low. Um, it's, it's hard to get into the hand tech dialed in perfectly at that level. But also, the value for acceptance on these, uh, the accuracy is much lower. So, I'm not, I'm not losing a whole lot of sleep over that. I'm just fine with it. It shows 3.92 to 4.08. It's quite interesting. So, yeah, that's what we got. Anyway, I'm going to say that concludes this exercise. We're going to move on. So the next one talks about check input coupling, and this is another one that you do a check, but you don't actually do anything as far as adjustment. And it sets the uh, volts per division to 10 millivolts with a frequency or, or signal of 20 millivolts, so two divisions. Then set the bottom of the signal to the center of the horizontal graticule using the position control, okay? And then uh, set the input coupling switch to AC, which I assume from the last step was DC, right? And then check that the display is centered about the center horizontal graticule line so that it hasn't, I guess, shifted significantly. And then it talks about moving uh, this to channel one and subsequently repeating the process. So that's what I got from that. Let's go over to the oscilloscope and take a look. So here's that signal they were talking about. And you wanted to put that bottom of the signal on the center graticule right there. I even centered it uh, in the middle too, for whatever reason. And just switch from DC to AC, and there it is. There's AC, there's DC. I'm assuming that's what the exercise entailed. And I didn't see any deviation that would cause me any alarm. And then subsequently repeat this test, channel one. So now I'm in channel one. You know, I put it there, DC, and there's AC, back to DC. So. There's the test that's conducted. I don't see any problem. And if there was a problem, I wouldn't know what to do about it because it doesn't tell me what to do. We're moving on. The next step takes this opportunity to begin with using the setup for probe compensation. And basically that's what we're going to do. Uh, I take the probe in 10 times mode, shown here as my Conrad probe. And I've coupled it in here and done the settings with the five graticules as they described. And I end up with this. And that is my square wave, one kilohertz as set up. And basically I'm going to, you know, take my screwdriver and adjust the probe to take out that um, distortion. And I'll just sort of show, go back and forth like that. It's kind of cool. But I'm just trying to remove it. And that's all I'm going to do. So I'll remove the distortion from the probe and then I'll come back to this. So having set everything up for this step, I got five divisions for this sine wave at one kilohertz, and it allows me to see specifically, you know, what kind of effect these settings will have for the next step. And those are in a table that are shown here in the book. And these are the uh, four capacitors that will be set uh, in accordance with the book to make that sine wave look as clean as possible. And step G is where this really all begins. It adjust the 10 times LF uh, comp capacitor for best front corner. So that's what we're gonna do. It looks pretty good, but I'm going to do this anyway. Uh, unlike resistors, obviously capacitors don't need to be cleaned. Uh, the, these are like open air capacitors, but I'm going to do this anyway and see how good we could get it. And this is what happens when you just see 12. So mine was pretty good, but just to display, this is how it distorts. And obviously there's an ideal point right there. This mine was a little off. That looks good. I'm going to lock C12 down just like that. So now I understand why they wanted to calibrate uh, or compensate these uh, um, probes. Uh, the next portion of the step says to go back to the probe and set the probe up for five divisions, which I have done, and now view that on the scope and adjust the 10C, or the 10 times input C capacitor for best flat top, and that would be C11 in this case. And here is C11 through the probe. I'll just wiggle it. That's right there, and I will set it for what I feel to be Pretty good. Yeah, it looks good to me. Now I found myself doing the same thing at one volt for a uh, five volt output. So I've had to remove my uh, resistor in play here 
in order to accomplish that. And basically we're repeating the process for the 100 times LF compensating capacitor. So let's do that now. The 100 times LF compensating capacitor is on C5. And this one does the same thing as last step. I'm just gonna get these done right quick. For the last step again, I have to refer back to the probe. Uh, unfortunately, this is all I can squeeze out of the generator. This is at the full 20 volts. I'm gonna have to work with this, so I'm gonna do my best, get this straight, and that's gonna be it. At this point, everything I mentioned throughout this entire step and process, with the exception of uh, doing compensation for the probes, has to be repeated from the beginning again for channel two. I'm not gonna repeat that process in the movie. I'll come back to it when it's done. Channel two actually needed a lot more work than channel one, which, which was kind of rewarding. But uh, it got done. Channel 2 is looking really nice now. Here's another checking step. Check the alternation operation. Uh, setting vertical mode to both and alt. Trigger source to 1. And, um, well, basically, couple to ground and 50 milliseconds. Should just look like a video game. But uh, just check that the sweeps alternate correctly. And that's it. So at sweep speeds of two milliseconds per division or faster, the trace sweep alternations occur too rapidly to be observed. This is true. So let's take a look at it. And this is basically all we're observing with alt, that it alternates between channel one and channel two. And if this is working, this is what they want you to observe. So we're gonna say that this is good, albeit fun to watch.